Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Uh, very auspicious day today. Thank you for joining us. It's uh, Vasant Panchami, uh, which is like the first day of uh, spring, especially in Bharat. Here it's a little cold, um, uh, but in Bharat it should now be getting a little bit warmer. A very um, uh, auspicious day because winter is tough. Um, it's cold, especially in the north of Bharat, and everybody's looking forward to winter ending and spring starting or, and coming up to summer later on. So today um, is Vasanta Panchami, which is the first day of spring, and a very auspicious day because it's also the appearance day of, um, well, it's when Saraswati Puja is done. So Saraswati is the goddess of learning. And today is when students would um, worship her, do puja to beg her for blessings, bless it, beg, her, beg her blessings for learning. Mm. And of course, we never stop learning, no matter how much we might know, or we don't know much in this world, unfortunately, because this world, uh, our Kali you brains can't handle too much, as Guru Maharaj used to say. So um, she's a very important personality because she will give um, the understanding by which we can come closer to Krishna. So Saraswati Mata is a very important personality. It's also the appearance day of uh, Shrimati Vishnu Priya Devi, and this is the one of the consorts of uh, Sri Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So she uh, was his second wife. Lakshmi Priya was his first, and um, she endured his taking sannyas and also him leaving this planet, and she continued serving his mother and the Vaishnavas. She blessed many wonderful devotees as well. Also, it's the disappearance of Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. And he is uh, one of the gurus in our line. So we have Guru Maharaj, and we have Prabhupada, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, Prabhupada, and Koki Shodas Babaji Maharaj. Then we have Bhakti Vinod Thakur, then we have Jagannath Das Babaji. Then we have Baladev Vidya Bhushan, and his spiritual master is Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. So um, he's the author of many wonderful bhajans, especially the Mangalati bhajan that we sing. Samsaradava nalalita loka dhanayakaranyadhanadhanatvam so this uh, is sung every morning at uh, 4.30 in the Hare Krishna temples. And it's the glorification, the Astikam, eight verses glorifying the Guru, the spiritual master. Also, it's the appearance of Pundarik Vidyanidhi, um, who appeared during Chaitanya Leela. And in his previous birth, he is Vrishabhanu Maharaj, the father of Shrimati Radha Rani, another very important personality in the Gaudiya tradition. And then uh, we wanted to talk about, uh, I think we may, may have time for one of these personalities to talk about, and then tomorrow perhaps we can take on the other one. Raghunath Das Goswami. Now, Raghunath Das Goswami is one of the six Goswamis. So let's see what we go about him. And it is his uh, appearance day. Raghunath Das Goswami, he was present on this planet from 1495 to 1586, quite old when he passed away. He was born in a small village of Sri Krishnapur in West Bengal. His father's name was Govardhan Maju Madara, who was the younger brother of Hiranya Maju Madara. 
they were landowners and tax collectors and they had such fabulous wealth. It was compared to that of Indra, the king of heaven. And today, today's terms, it will be compared to, what was his name? Elon Musk of Tausa. <laughs> Probably one of the richest men in the world. The Shilapopa describes the family of Raghunath Das. Compared to today's standards, they would have been multi, multi, multi millionaires, practically billionaires. Of the two brothers, Hiranya and Govardhan, there was only one son to whom everything belonged. That was Raghunath Das. His father and uncle were Vaishnavs. They were devotees of the Lord. They were disciples of the great Yadunandan Thakur. Yadunandan Thakur was initiated by Srila Advaitacharya and was an intimate student of the great and most compassionate soul, Vasudev Dhat. As a boy, Raghunath received Haridas Thakur's association and blessings. So much influenced by the example of Haridas, he had no attachment or affection for any of the materialistic things of this world. So if you can imagine this boy um, was born into perhaps the richest family in the world, yet he had zero interest in the wealth. This was turning out to be a big problem for his parents because they wanted him to take over everything. So they married Raghunath Das to a beautiful, um, chaste young woman. When Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas in Katwa, afterwards he decided to go to Brindavan. He was in essence dancing and chanting through the forest and the towns and villages in great expectation to reach Prajabhumi. However, Nityananda Prabhu, knowing how much pain the separation was within the hearts of the devotees he had left behind in Navadvip and Shantipur, and he was meditating on the condition of Satchidevi and others like Advitas and Srinivas, Shivas, Nityananda Prabhu tricked Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by giving him different information by which he came to Shantipur by way of the Ganga. So instead of going to Vrindavan, he ended up in Shantipur. So there in Shantipur, Lord Chaitanya met his mother, who saw him for the first time with shaved head and robes of a sannyasi. That broke the hearts of so many devotees, because he had nice long flowing hair. And now he had shaved head and he had the dress of a sannyasi. So Raghunath Das came to meet Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for the first time on that occasion. Of the six Goswamis, Raghunath Das was the first to meet Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally. He stayed there for 10 days with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this was a real incredible blessing for Raghunath Das Goswami. Then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu on the instructions of his mother, decided to go to Jagannath Puri instead of Bandhavan. And the reason for that was Jagannath Puri was a lot closer to Navadvip than Bandhavan. So he obeyed his mother and he worshipped Jagannath in Puri. When Raghunath Das Goswami went home, he no longer had any interest in any of the things of the world. He simply wanted to go to Jagannath Puri to meet with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That was his constant meditation. So it became a daily affair that Raghunath Das would run away from home and his parents would find him in a distant place through many guards and servants. <clears throat> so he would run away. They would force him back home. As soon as he got an opportunity, he'd run away again. They'd force him back home. So he kept getting caught. Now, he was so renounced, he would not enter into the interior compound of his house. He would sleep and stay in the courtyard called Durga Mandap. Now, one day, 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu on the, his next tri trip to Vrindavan, he came to Shantipur again. This time Raghunath Das was given permission by his father to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but he was also surrounded by many gods. Now, Raghunath Das Goswami at that time, when he met Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he offered his life at the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he told Chaitanya Mahaprabhu his deep desire to be relieved of the entanglement and bondage of his household engagements and to serve him 100%. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave Raghunath Das wonderful instructions. You should not be a market bairagi. You should not be a monkey renunciate. So, interesting um, instruction. Monkeys appear to be much renounced. They live in trees. They do not wear clothes. They eat only what grows in the trees. However, they always have so many thoughts about how to enjoy female monkeys whenever the opportunity comes. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed him, you should pretend in an external way to be completely attached to wealth and family. You should perform your duties as a first-class business manager. But in your heart, you should always be meditating on Krishna. Very soon, Krishna will show your mercy to you, his mercy to you. So Raghunath Das went home and he appeared to his parents to be completely settled in materialistic life. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu convinced Raghunath Das, don't, don't be foolish, don't uh, try to renounce artificially or prematurely. But just pretend that you are attached to the family and wealth, etc. Mm -hmm. So once his father and uncle got into trouble, they were collecting tax from people and they collect so much tax, two million gold coins per month. They would give, they were supposed to give three quarters of it to the government and keep one quarter. But one uh, Chaudhary, uh, assistant tax director, found out that they were cheating, that they only gave 1.2 million gold coins and they were keeping the extra 300,000 gold coins for themselves. So he put them into prison. Or well, he tried to at least, he tried to arrest them. But they ran away. Hiranya and Govardhan, the father and uncle of Gov uh, Raguna, they ran away. They said they, the, the guards, they arrested Raghunath and put him into jail. And every day, this Chaudhary would come and harass Raghunath to get information. Where is your father? And where is your uncle? <laughs> but every time he would go to give Raghunath a beating, just seeing the beauty of Raghunath and his gentleness and his compassionate nature, this Chaudhary's heart would melt and he would not beat Raghunath. And then one day he told the Chaudhary, actually, you know, my uncle and my father and you are just like brothers. You had such intimate relationship. Sometimes brothers will naturally argue and fight, but tomorrow, they will sit together very peacefully with great love for each other. Because you're in that relationship, you are like my father. This is how I respect you and have affection for you. You should not hurt your own son. You should be kind and compassionate to your own son. After all, you're a Muslim, you're a great saint. You know the scriptures, you're a compassionate, merciful being. So Raghunath Das Goswami, when he spoke something like this, he melted the heart of the Chaudhary, who started to cry and embraced Raghunath. And he said, yes, yes, what you're saying is true. You are like my son. How much love he developed for Raghunath Das. How can I hurt you? You should go, you should be free. Regards your father and uncle, when you happen to see them, you give them this message. Whatever extra profit they are making, they should divide with me. Ultimately, they can do whatever they want, but this message, give this message and arrange for me to meet with them personally. So this is um, the skill of Raghunath. Right? He then arranged a meeting with the Chaudhary and uh, Govardhan Hiranya, and they settled everything. And in that way, it looked like Raghunath Das was uh, 
become, had become a really a nice worldly man looking after his wealth. <laughs> Once his father allowed Raghunath Das to visit Nityananda Prabhu at Panihati. This is a really famous pastime. He paid his obeisances from a distance, but the Lord summoned him, Nityananda, and ordered him to prepare and serve chipped rice and yogurt. So this is the Panihati festival, but every year is celebrated in the summertime. And this is uh, Raghunath Das receiving the blessings of Lord Nityananda's feet on his head. It's the wrong way around. So he happily followed the order of Nityananda and they organized a huge festival distributing chip rice mixed with yogurt. But they had so many other things. There was uh, milk, sweet rice, sweet sweets, sugars, bananas, eatables. They, they made a huge feast and all sorts of people, all sorts of Brahmins, devotees came from all over the place. And they were fed very beautifully in this festival, Panihati festival. And Nityananda himself would feed. And in fact, Nityananda brought Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who was in Puri. <laughs> he brought him mentally there. And when Mahaprabhu arrived, Nityananda stood up. And um, they had a, such a fantastic festival. Nityananda would take one morsel of chip rice and push it into the mouth of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as a joke. And all the Vaishnavas would see the great fun at this incredible festival. We won't go too much into the detail because it's quite a lot, but it's uh, very joyful. And it's described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Antalila, sixth chapter. It's, it's given in quite a lot of detail. The day after the festival, Nityananda mm. gave um, Nityananda gave Raghunath the blessing that he would very soon attain the shelter of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Um, just one second. That very soon he would attain the shelter of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And after this, Raghunath went back home and he was praying to, uh, to Lord Chaitanya. And of course, his mother and father, they were as worried as before. Many times Raghunath tried to escape. His father said to his mother, this Raghunath has gone crazy. He won't stay home. You should tie him with ropes. His father would reply, he's already bound by wealth of Indra. So much opulence, so much fine clothes, so much beautiful living condition. His wife is more beautiful than an angel. If these things can't keep him home, how can we expect to keep him home with ropes? Our son has received the mercy of Gauranga. Who can keep such a madman from the service of the Lord? <laughs> Very true. So Raghunath Das, he would sometimes pretend very nicely, but there were always guards around him. So how to, he would always be meditating how to escape, how to achieve the lotus feet of Gauranga. So one day, the family guru, Yadunandan, had a problem. One of his disciples, a Brahmin priest, Uh, who worshipped his deities had left his service. So, Yadunandan knew Raghunath was very expert in dealing on all levels. So, he asked him to help talk to the Brahman 
And Raghunath said, yes, I can talk to him. You just stay here at the home. Uh, um, you just stay here, Yadunandan Acharyaji, and I will talk to the Pujari. And Yadunandan agreed. In the meantime, Raghunath, he uh, found this is the way that he's going to escape from his home. So he preached to the Pujari first, then immediately he fled into the forest. And he went, uh, he disappeared. First he went east, then he traveled east for a long time. Eventually he kept changing his direction because he knew that father would send the, the um, guards to check him over. Anyway, eventually his father did send a message uh, to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu um, through Shivananda Sen because they knew he was going to go through Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Um, so the messengers, they went to Shivananda Sen who said to him then that my son is, your son, your father, Raghunath Das is not here. And we don't know where he is. And truly they didn't know because Raghunath was actually traveling through various forests and jungles. And it took him 12 days to reach Jagannath Puri, in which time he hardly ate. Sometimes he would eat some, maybe have some milk or something. But he was always necessary because he was now going on its way to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Finally reaching Chaitanya Mahaprabhu after 12 days, um, he, he met Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and they gave him a personal residence. Uh, sorry, he went to the Gambira where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was staying. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very happy when he saw Raghunath Das Goswami. And, but in great humility, Raghunath Das would surrender himself to the Supreme Lord. I do not know who Krishna is, but I know your causeless mercy has saved me. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied very nicely, material life is like a deep, deep ditch where people go to pass to. Because your father and uncle are friends of my grandfather and father, therefore we are related. I can say some joking words about them. Your father and uncle are like worms living in the stool of a, that ditch. Although they're Vaishnav, they're not pure Vaishnavs. They have many material attachments. They have given so much charity, yes, and donations to other people, but still too much material attachment. But Krishna has rescued you and brought you here. So these are really amazing words. The Lord will always know what is in our heart. So if we are very attached to material things, he will recognize that. But if we're a little bit like Raghunath Das, then he will recognize that as well. Then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will turn to Swarup Damodar, his most uh, personal associate, and said, I want you to take care of Raghunath Das. I'm personally placing you in uh, him in your loving care. Then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took the hand of Raghunath Das and the hand of Swarup and put them together. Swarup Damodar is the secretary of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, personal secretary, and a very dear devotee. Uh, I think it's Lalita, isn't it? In uh, Vajlila. Mm. And he said to him, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to Swarup Damodar, now there are three ragus, Vedya ragu, there's Bhatta ragu, and there's ragu, and this is Raguna who will be known as Raghunath of Swarup Damodar Das. <laughs> so he's known as Raghunath Das Goswami. So, um, there's quite a lot actually still to cover. Then we can do it tomorrow. Yeah, there's quite a lot to do. So let's do part two tomorrow. And there's another devotee we don't want to talk about tomorrow, who is Raghunandan Thakur who is a really extraordinary personality as well. So let's carry on tomorrow um, because it's, rather than rushing through it now, let's um, 
and in a past time of, he's a really incredibly renounced devotee and so much we can learn from Raghunath Das Goswami. So are there any questions or comments? Otherwise we'll just carry on tomorrow if that's okay with the devotees. Okay, Raghunath Das Goswami Ki Jai Vasant Panchmi Ki Jai.